I found out ultimately that I had the BRCA1 gene mutation when I was 20, but I would say that my story definitely kind of starts back when I was a child. My mom was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer when I was nine. Yay. What's up fam? I'm Ty. I'm Haley. And we're the Kelly fam. So for those of you who don't know, my wife, Haley, at the age of 27, got a total hysterectomy and a double mastectomy. Since September of last year, we've received thousands of messages and questions asking about Haley's journey and the process through all of these surgeries. We're gonna use this series as a way to answer all your questions and take a deep dive into what exactly it is that Haley had to go through. So today we're gonna to be talking about BRCA mutations. Could you explain what a BRCA mutation is? A BRCA mutation or a BRCA mutation, depending on who you talk to, really is just talking about a gene that all of us have. So all of us have a BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene, but there's a small percentage of the population that are born with a mutation on that gene, either the BRCA1 gene or the BRCA2 gene, and they carry different risk factors. These mutations are genetic. So they're passed down from your family. They can be passed through both sides, male and female. Who has a BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene mutation, then you have a 50% chance of inheriting that mutation yourself. Which BRCA mutation do you have? I have the BRCA1 mutation. My mother is the carrier in our family. Take us through your story. When did you find out? What was it like? Give us a little bit of insight into your story. I found out ultimately that I had the BRCA1 gene mutation when I was 20, but I would say that my story definitely kind of starts back when I was a child because my mom was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer when I was nine. That would have been fall of 2004 after a lot of tests and a couple misdiagnoses, they found out that she had ovarian cancer and it wasn't until she was diagnosed with that cancer that she got tested and found out that we had this mutation that went back and forwards now into our family. Can you give us a little bit more insight into what a BRCA mutation does for your chances of cancer? BRCA2 mutations have a slightly less risk of the different types of cancers that it predisposes you to than BRCA1, but the types of cancer are very similar, although the percentages are a little bit different. I am not a doctor. This is just the data that has been put in front of me. So these percentages are ever changing as they do more research and as time goes on. What I was told by my genetic counselor was that with a BRCA1 gene mutation, my chances of breast cancer in my lifetime was somewhere in the 80% range. For ovarian cancer, my percentages were around the 60% chance of having ovarian cancer in my lifetime. Those are the two main cancers that you hear people talk about just because they are the most prevalent. A lot of times they can be the most fatal. However, there's also melanoma, skin cancer, colon cancer. Males can get breast cancer, male breast cancer, which isn't talked about very much. Pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer. And the pancreatic cancer is, um, I think, a lot higher on the BRCA2 side. Just a lot of different cancers that you have a heightened risk of having if you have a BRCA1 or 2 genetic mutation. Why does a BRCA mutation put you at a higher risk for these certain types of cancers? Basically, BRCA1 gene makes a protein and when cells start to mutate, so cancer is just um, uncontrollable replication of mutated cells. When the cells in our body mutate, we have proteins that our body naturally makes and those proteins basically stop things from continuing to proliferate and turn into to what would eventually be cancer. People with BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations lack that protein. I believe the BRCA gene is on the 17th chromosome, so there's a protein there that we don't have. So when things start to really replicate and get out of hand, our bodies aren't able to shut it down like the typical persons might be. For those of you who are watching and have questions, what's the next steps? If you have never had genetic testing done, but you see that you have, for instance, a long family line of breast cancer, your mom had breast cancer, your aunt, and grandma, and so on, 
and you just see a, a pattern in your family, you can always talk to your doctor. I think most women start with their gynecologist just because that's the kind of doctor that a woman goes to most regularly. Any doctor, your primary care physician could do the same. They can refer you for a genetic test. And there's a lot of companies that do this now. Really, you can get them done a lot of ways and they've become really affordable too. They draw a sample of blood at the lab and send it off and then your results come in the mail to see if you're a carrier of one of these mutations. And they even have some tests where you use like a um, saliva sample. I've actually been tested twice. If you already know that you have a BRCA1 or 2 mutation and you kind of don't know where to go from there, I would say that the first place to start is just to establish yourself with the specific type of doctors that typically deal with this kind of stuff. So that would be a GYN oncologist, a breast oncologist, since breast cancer is the most prevalent cancer of people with BRCA1 and 2 mutations. And I would say that once you kind of establish that relationship, then they can give you all of the information to go from there and suggest screenings and different things that could be of benefit. What was it like when you found out that you had the BRCA mutation that your mom had? and your grandma and your great grandma. I think that there was a part of me that always assumed that I was going to have it from the time I was nine and knew that I had a 50-50 chance of having it, but you never really feel that until you know you have it. I will say that I have zero regrets about knowing that I have it. There are some people who kind of go back and forth between should I even get tested, do I even want to know. I definitely am 100% happy that I know because it wouldn't have led me to take the steps that have put me where I am today. But it was a lot to take in and, and it feels like a very dark cloud over you at first because there's just a lot of moving parts and you kind of have that what do I do now feeling, especially at 20. But you made it through. So if you like this information and it was helpful to you, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Our next video is going to break down what's it like to have a total hysterectomy and we're going to also talk about surgical menopause. Hopefully we can help you in um, future videos as well. Thanks fam.